In this video, I'm gonna walk you through using your Juliet's score tool with solid score lines. The process is very simple and we're actually going to use a dreaming tree project as the example. Now, in this example, we're gonna use this very pretty Christmas cutlery pocket. And you can see that we have some folds here. And I did use the solid score version in this example. Now, one thing to note when you're going to cut a project with solid score lines, you need to make sure that you're actually importing the solid score version of the file. So in this dreaming tree example, we're gonna go under the SVG folder. And if we take a look at main all American red, this is the actual cut. You'll notice here that in this folder, these score marks are perforated. Okay, you don't want to use this one with a solid score tool. This is more for cutting with a blade. If you don't have a score tool, this will give you the perforated score lines. So instead, we're going to go into the extras folder, and in there you'll see a folder labeled solid score line. Let's open that up. Now we typically include all of the SVG files for the project, even though some of these don't even have score lines. It's just easier as far as workflow goes to not have to go back and forth between the main SVG folder and the solid score line folder. So this is the only item or only SVG in this project that has solid score lines, and you can see the difference here. So we're gonna take and drag and drop this into your Surecuts sure A Lot software. Okay, and here it is. We'll go ahead and position it. You always wanna position it on the bottom left-hand corner. Give yourself a little wiggle room on the left and bottom. And we're gonna actually be working with the layers section here. Here is the file. We're gonna expand the group, and we'll do it again here. And that is gonna reveal three layers, okay? Now you can tell by the little icon here that we've got a lot of red here. This is your cut layer. This is all of this red. This layer here, if you highlight it, you'll notice there's a little selection box that goes right around the score marks. So this is gonna be your score layer. And then this layer here selects these little elements here, and these are just little markers. So these are gonna be cut layers. So the scoring layer is right here. Now if you want, just to make things easier for yourself, you can double click this layer and just type in scoring. That way you know. And if you double click here, you can type in cutting. I typically don't do this, but you can. It'll make it a lot easier to identify what's what once you know what it is. So to accomplish a score on this file, we obviously want to cut it, and then we want to score it. Now you can do it in any order you want. You can cut first or score first. If you score first, you'll cut next. If you cut first, you'll score next. But let's go ahead, we're gonna go ahead and cut this first. Now, if we do not turn off the score layer here, the blade will actually cut to this, and we don't want that, okay? So if you have your blade inserted, you wanna begin by just cutting the cut portions and turning off the score portion. So one other thing you can do, just to verify that you're doing it correctly, is you can click this little preview button here, and what that's going to do is show you where the blade is actually going to go. These are the nodes that it's going to cut. This is the path that it's going to cut. You'll notice that the score lines are not included in this cut, which is perfect. So just make sure that your blade is in the housing, in the carriage, and you can go ahead and hit cut or cutter. Now with your Caesar machine, you can actually set the force and the speed on your machine. But if you want sure cuts a lot to overwrite that, you can click this little checkbox next to use software speed and force that will override the settings on your machine. And by doing this, we now have the ability to increase or decrease these settings. Okay, so when I'm cutting cardstock, I typically have my force at about 50. So we'll set that to 50. And my speed is usually around seven or eight. I'll leave that at eight. Now, one thing that you can do when you set your force and your speed is you can save this as a preset. 
And you can accomplish that by clicking this little plus sign here after you've made your settings. So I'll hit plus, and that's adding a new preset. And I'll call this cardstock. And you can see here the speed is 8, the force is 50, and I'll hit OK. And now in this preset dropdown, we have a custom preset. We have cardstock. So let's say if you change something here, and you want to go back, you can click here and click cardstock, and you can see that it automatically sets this back to those defined settings. Okay? So we're going to start off by cutting this. So you can go ahead and hit cut, and that's going to go ahead and cut the cut portion. Now, once the machine is done cutting, you do not want to unload the mat, nor do you want to move the blade by using the arrows on the machine. You want it to stay where it is. We're going to go back into Sure Cuts a lot, and we're going to turn off the cutting portions. So there's a little eyeball here that allows you to turn on and off the different layers. These little cuts here are little markers to help you with positioning of the little filigree piece that goes on this. So we're going to turn that off. We don't need to score that. It's already been cut. And we can turn off the main cut. And then we're going to turn on, by clicking here, the scoring section. Now our score lines are white, so they don't appear unless you hover your mouse over this. Now just be careful not to click and drag anything. Now another thing you can do is hit Preview. And you can see when we click Preview, the score marks are in fact designated with the red lines. Now typically with our files, we will take the score lines and make them go a little bit further than they need to just to make sure that we get a full score. So I can just hit Done here, and I'm going to go back under Cutter. Now what we need to do is take out the blade at this point, and put in the score tool. Now what I like to do, and I learned this little trick from a friend of mine in the industry by the name of Sandy. Um, I use a nickel, actually. So what I'll do is slide the nickel directly under the little section where the tool sits, and I'll drop the score tool into the little holder until it hits the nickel. And then I'll go ahead and tighten it to make sure that it's nice and secure. And once it's nice and tight, you can go ahead and take and remove that nickel and just keep it handy. So we're going to go back to Cutter. And this time, we're going to change the force. If you're using a nickel, you can set this to 100. Now, if you use something else to set the height of your score tool, this value will be different. Okay, And I can't tell you what that value is. We're using the nickel to set the height of the score tool and that will determine the force. So I'm going to set that to 100. And now while we're at it, we can click the plus sign here. And I'm going to create another preset and call it scoring. You can see the speed is 8. And now instead of the force being 50, the force is 100. We'll hit OK. And now you can see that you can easily go back between cardstock, which is 50, and scoring, which is 100. And then you can go ahead and hit cut. And of course, it's not going to cut because the score tool's in there. It will do the scoring. So let's take a look at the final result. So that's really going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a very simple process. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel, and I will see you at the next one.